Uh, so good evening, everybody. Uh, we are going to be studying uh, how to uh, a little bit about Noah tonight. So I hope everybody is very familiar with the story. Uh, so we're going to start off by trying to frame the story and see what are the relevant um, what are the relevant parts to the story and see how we we would rank um, we rank them. Um, so so the, so for my first question is for the floor is. Assuming that you have read uh, the, that you've read or got your, your impressions of Noah, so how would you rank it? Um, if everyone's chime in, feel free, or you just type in the chat. How would you rank Noah on a scale of you know like you know would you rank him you know like you know a vote level, Spiezen, or Sadik, or you know a nice guy? What would you which one would you stick? Which group do you put it in? It looks like we're all pretty pretty confused, which is fine. So, uh, so I'll just go through. I'll go through the basic step, the basic um, parts of the story, and then we'll see where we where, where we want to where we want to. Okay, the early wrote nice guy. Okay, so there is. I'm going to start. I got an, I got a, oh, uh, we're pretty harsh about Noah. Okay, uh, got a nice guy and an okay person. Nobody thinks he's worthy of being a you should be invite, nor is he one of the other. Okay. So here goes. I'm going to be sharing my screen now, so we'll hopefully all be able to um, have a little bit better understanding of what's going on. Here, let me try and get the bigger. Sorry about that. Um, let me make it a little bit. Just so this will be a little bit clearer for everybody. Sorry. Um, so. Okay, I'll get the PDF version instead. It's normally easier for me to read, right? Okay. PDF image. Okay. Okay. There we go. Nope. Okay. So basically, so no, so, so let's start with no. What's the first thing we know about Noah? So the first thing we hear about him is his being born. Right? That's the first thing we hear is Noah being born. So that should so that seemingly should be enough for us to know everything. Um, about him, potentially. Okay, so what do I say? Why, and why do I say that that, that, that can teach a lot about him? Because he, when he's when he's born, he's given a name with a special purpose. Even. Right. So he's given the purpose of. Uh, here we go. I'm going to skip down to the bottom where I highlighted the part. That he's skipping through everything. Sorry. Um, to be the part where. I, oops, I scrolled way too fast there. So sorry about that. Okay, so what he's given the name Noah, and why is he called Noah? Because right? So he's given very, you know, he's given you know a whole introduction. He's being a welcome to the world with a big mission. So that would, and so the question is, do we think of he fulfills his mission or not? What do we think? Noah fulfilled the mission that is that his parents set out for him of fixing God and having cursed this cursed land. So here we go. So we got we I got a kind of from or I got a kind of from Earth from Orly. The kind of. Do my kind of. So do we mean you're you you are you done with yourselves? Um you want? I don't think I've muted. Um, um, how do I mute everyone? I got a yes from Shira. Um, so everybody can unmute themselves if they'd like. Yeah. Sorry, I'm having some trouble hearing on and off. Okay. Good to know. Uh, so, her question is Did Noah fulfill his mission of fixing the cursed world that his parents gave him? Um, oh, thank you. Um, so I think like, like it depends on what you mean by fix. I think like if you're very utilitarian about it, then he kind of did because the world was wiped out and he started in like a more, you know, depending on how you read the rest of Tanakh, but a more like moderate, better population. But in terms of like actually fixing the people around him, not really. Right. So he didn't really... Um, solid people around him part. That much he definitely did not um, did, did not 
Um, he did. He did not. He did. He did not fix that issue. So, right. So as far as why I think that he might not have done the greatest job is because notice the words here. Notice the, uh, highlighted in light green. Right. Who will you know comfort us or fix that from our curse? So to that end, Chazal say that he invented the plow. So he did help them in terms of you know dealing with the cursed earth. Right. So the problem with that is is that when we see a few seconds later. When God is deciding to destroy the earth um, and bring them, I bring the flood. What does He say? He says, "By Yinachem Hashem, Ki Asat Adam Ba'aret, Ba Yidat Seiv Alibo." And then He says, "Emcha Et Adam, Asher Barat Me Al Pnei Adama, Me Adam Ad Hema Ad Ramesh Ad Ochem Shemaim, Ki Chamdi Ki Asiti." Noach Matzachem Bnei Hashem. So we see that basically. So Noach. Like the same language we have with a parent hope for him, the exact same words are used to show that actually we're all gonna they're all gonna die. So maybe he wasn't as successful. So that's one thing we have to bear in mind. And then so then so that's one story. So the what his parents wanted him to do, did he feel so that seemingly not? Um, but then the other question is is what else was he granted to do? What else would God ask him to do? As an easy one. God asked Noah to he asked God, he asked Noah to build a teva and gather the animals. Right? So that task. Did he did Noah do that pretty well? Yes. Yes, he did. Yeah, we got all the animals. Yeah, did spot on job. Oh, that part he did well. And so that that would apply that you know he's doing great, and you know he gets all that. But thing is, so but is that really doing so doing great by doing that? Right, because he's doing this for, in theory, not necessarily out of righteousness, but out of self preservation. Right, because what didn't he do? Right, ask about anybody else. Yeah. He right. He didn't, he didn't ask about anybody else. So to that, there's actually my flow code in the Midrash shame if he did. So we can look at that. Let's scroll on up. There we go. Did Noah, uh, did Noah ask anybody else? So we, here. So here. So that's here. In Rashid Rabba Lamed, uh, Pazik Zion. So this is where the, so, so there's an added story of Noah. I'm spending 120 years planting trees, harvesting them, and building the, the and build and building up the, the the ark. And the whole time they're asking, "What are you doing?" And he's like, "You should repent, or we're all going to we're all going to die." And everybody's like, "Nah, Mishael's side aches, will be good." And you know, Mishael dies a week before the flood, and then they all die. Um, so then, so that midrash says that no, at least try. But the midrash is noticeably not in the Pesukim, so. Right, so again, so, so so far we have what Noah, so Noah, so the question is, did Noah fulfill what his parents wished him to do? So, the circumstance is not from the drush of the fact that he that he made the plow, maybe he did solve the curse. Um, then, when he, when God, then when God said, hey, everybody's going to die, you should build an ark. So the question is, so did he do the right thing by doing God said do it and he did it? And that's great. Or do we say, no, it's terrible because we should have, you know, asked. To save people, which you did not do. So, what, 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 so then, what, what else will we have? What other, what other things we have? So, what else did Noah do? Let's go, let's go back to the second. And uh, let's, let's go from that, right? So, what else did Noah do that we that we say he? So, what, what was the next step in the story, right? So, Noah gathered all the animals and they go on the table. So does he do that? Does he do that? Does he do that? Uh, does he do that properly? Yes. Yes, he does. He takes care of them. You know, there is a midrash about you know how he you know may have been late feeding the, feeding the animals once. But you know, overall, it seems like you know over the course of you know a year on a boat with all the animals in the world, like being late with giving the, the lion his lunch once is you know part of the course, right? A great job. So, what's the next thing that he does? What's the next event afterwards? Right. Oh, it, it rains and okay. 
So we'll be the next thing, right? So we, we have the, well, well during the flood. What happens after the flood? So he, he sends a, a dove out. Right, the dove. So that seems like he's, you know, seeming that seems like a good thing. He's taking initiative, making sure it's safe. You know, don't want to risk everybody's lives. That sounds like a good thing. So score another right. one for Noah being a good, a good guy. So what's the, what's the, and what's the next step that makes him seem like an even better guy? Now, once he's sure it's safe and God says you're clear to, you're clear, you're clear for landing. So what does he do? Yeah, let's scroll, sorry, let's scroll down so we can see the second here. So what does he do? He brings a Corban. Right? He brings a Corban, which is a very impressive thing because, well, nobody's, he was never, never told to do that. Just like he had the idea about setting out the dove, he also has and the raven. He also here has the idea of we should offer Corbano. God told him to bring way too many of certain of his animals. He thought had a plan that you know what, I did it. And he offers a Corbano, and that's great. And also interesting to note is that at what point, what happened? What happens immediately following Noah's offering the Corbano? So we're in Pesach Chafalov now. So what does God say? He smells the smell of the of the korbanot, and then he says, "I will no longer curse the land that man is upon." Because we, I realize that man is. Yeah, he's always wicked, so he can't, it's not really his fault, so he'll make mistakes, and I shouldn't, you know, be so harsh. Then he follows it up with the, be, with the covenant of the Greek Kesha, of the, of the rainbow, with, that, 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 with saying that God will, just, God will never again destroy the world by bringing a flood. So seemingly, Noah's bringing the Korban is the perfect thing, and now things are great. So... That would be great if that's where the story ended. But where did, but that's not the end of the story. What, what happens afterwards? Right, so after we have the covenant, God promises that, that, that you know, that, that'll keep the world safe. And then he allows, now this is meant, since now did such a good job of taking care of the animals on the teva, and now he's able to actually eat meat, which he wasn't allowed to do before. So what happens now? Now that he has his covenant, what's the first thing that all does after the covenant? We're in verse 18. And heading into 20, what does Noah do? This is the first the first thing that Noah does when he gets off. Plants a vineyard. He plants a vineyard. So is this a good thing or a bad thing? Depends on how you view alcohol. Correct. Depends on how you alcohol. We'll get back to that in just a minute. I've got a lot of stories about alcohol. If you uh, if people scan the story, hopefully they notice that. Um, so the question is, how do you view that the story of Noah's drinking? Right. And depending on how you view that, that might have a big effect. This is the last story we have. Because Noah, you know, he plants a vineyard, and then he drinks, and he becomes uncovered, and then his and then his son Tom discovers him, mocks his father, and the other sons cover him up. Right, I mean, you have to cover him up, and then we see Noah waking up and cursing Tom or Knan, Tom's son. And then what happens after that? Right, he, so Noah, so 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 Knan gets a, gets a curse, Yefet gets a blessing, Shame gets a, a blessing, and then what happens? Then Noah's dead. So the question of how we view Noah will depend on how we view all we viewed all those activities until now. Right? How do we so currently we have we have again we have Noah's, you know, we have his did he fulfill what his, his parents' mission for him was? At the end of the day, it seems like he, he fulfilled it. Even if he didn't save the rest of the rest of you know his generation, he still at least he, he stopped the curse on the land by the covenant he gets with Hashem. Um, so should, should, the question is, so should he have tried to save the, his generation? Did he do all that he could in terms of, of, of building the ark and afterwards? 
And what happened at the end was the drunk story. Those are the three questions we have to figure out. So now we're gonna so we're gonna scroll back up. Then we're gonna scroll down, and we're gonna take a look at how Noah is perceived in Tanakh. So Noah is not quoted extensively in Tanakh. He's actually only quoted twice, um, not counting in Divrei uh, Yamin. So Noah is only so Noah is only quoted twice actually. Um, in, in Tanakh, not counting in, 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 in lists of names, which I would say don't really count because that's not, you know, glorifying or referencing it properly. It's just, so there's two references to Noah. So one is in Yeshayahu, one is in Yeshayahu. So the question is, do, does this, are these positive views of Noah or are these negative views of Noah? <laughs> So the first one we have is in, in so you can, let's go through, so chronologically, the Yishriyahu is first. So, right, so he says, right, so he, so what he's uh, prophesizing about what's going to happen to um, how, how he's not going to end up punishing uh, B'nai Israel and fully destroy them. So he invokes, he invokes the breed he made with Noah. But just like I promise I never flood the world, therefore I'm never going to end up. Um, God will never undo his covenant with Israel. Which seemingly is a good, pretty good. So on the other hand, we have another. We have another. So that, so that one you could say is you know we are referencing not still being a good thing. So the Quran we're against. Okay. And then when we, when we get to Yeshua though. It's interesting here is that when is no one mentioned? He's mentioned with two other people. Okay, he's mentioned with um, um, Noah. He's mentioned with it goes Noah, Daniel, the Eov. Right, this is the triplicate we have here of these three Anashim, of these three righteous individuals. So the question is, so what makes these people righteous, and how does that relate to everything else? So, so Noah. So, so, so one option is that you could say that you know these are all. Just have these three very famous righteous people, and that's it. Um, but uh, you can also say that these might be the three righteous Gentiles. So the debate is, is um, there's debate is no, is is Noah um, is, is the debate, well Noah's not Jewish because you know Avram wasn't born yet, and we know that um, Eov, Eov um, Chazal say also wasn't Jewish, and so the question is what to do about Daniel because Daniel is going to be a pretty Jewish name. So I'd like to point out that there's a Ktiv there of Don L, right, which is not Daniel, right, a different name, Don L. So, so there's a possibility brought by, by, by a number of academics that maybe that this Don L isn't Daniel, it's actually, there's another another right, there's another figure um, known in the ancient world as Don L, who was a, again, a righteous individual, not, not Daniel, who's everything else written about, but another nice guy who's, you know, Therefore, it's, there's three you know, notable Gentiles, and Noah's one of them. So again, I place him on the good list. I wouldn't necessarily place him on the he's one of our forefathers list. Yeah, maybe Yechezkel, seemingly not so much. So, so, so now, so how does Tanakh view Noah? So the answer is, is well, we've got a whole bunch of silence, and then two references, which are not necessarily clearly indicating Noah being viewed in the most well, he's definitely he's viewed in a positive light, but not necessarily in a light as like when we invoke, you know, Abraham and Yaakov throughout Tanakh. So that, that's not be we never had to see that happening with Noah. So now we're going to skip ahead to uh, jump ahead in history. Now a couple hundred years. Now we're in the time of the Apocrypha. Apocrypha is is it basically it's the books that didn't get into Tanakh were written during at some point during by Shani. Uh, um, the question is when precisely were they written? Well, as where in the world were they written? Um, I mean, some were written in Israel, some were written in Chutzlarets. Why they were excluded is a, as a story for other time. They're called apocrypha, also known as the hidden works. So the first one I'd like to point out, that I'd like to point to, that explicitly mentions uh, that Noah has a forefather is in Tobit. So Tobit is an interesting um, story of a, an interesting story of a man who ends up having a very hard life. And ends up traveling around, and then you know, had, had all trouble, trouble, a lot of trouble before, before him, and then you know, slowly makes his way back. 
and 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 then in the end again it's a great it's an interesting story if you want to if you want to if you want to read it um please go ahead you can find you can find it um link on the page over there um if you want to read if you want to read the whole story um the one i gave you both has the greek as well as as well as, well as the hebrew it was most likely originally written in hebrew we only have their surviving um greek translation um the Pentateuchine, because well we have some fragments that have been found um, at, at, at the Dead Sea Scrolls, but we don't actually have a full copy, but thankfully the Christian church decided it was worthy of saving, so therefore we have it. Um, it might be, though, whether or not you should or not is a story about, of, about the Star of Amphithona, about, about books that have been deliberately excluded, so we'll leave that aside for a separate story a different year. So, but what does they say there? So he says when he's praying to... Um, when, when, when he's praying, when, when COVID is praying to God, so, and he is giving, and also we're giving, giving him a um, advice for, for some sense on his journey, which will hopefully eventually come full circle and stay the father as well in the story. So he says, we are children of the prophets, Noah, Noah, of Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the reason why it's spelled with an E is because it's based off of the Greek one when they didn't have a fat. So, Anyways, so right, so here clearly you see that there's four forefathers. Noah, Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. We have four forefathers now, so at least according to Tobin. So that so did they clearly read positively all the questions they had about Noah. They're like, nope, he's got a covenant with God. He saved the world. He's our forefather. Very straight. Similarly, Ben Sira again, another work of apocrypha. It's a wisdom work again, uh, written by somebody named Ben Sira. Um, where he uh, where he gives a list of, of forefathers of, of people who are our forefathers. So here, actually, the, the, the list is a little bit longer. Um, it actually has five. We also have Chano. Okay, again, so again, this was this was originally written in this one uh, was probably written in Hebrew. We don't have the original Hebrew, so as I decided to bring you guys to get ready English because well, may as well save us all some effort. Um, as well, for not reading the original, may as well read one we have. We understand better. So, okay, so here we see, right, we see that there's the, the famous men, our fathers that begat us, right? So, this is seemingly a list of our, of our forefathers. I know who we have listed. We've got Enoch, which is Thano. So again, apologies for um, the Greeks not knowing how to pronounce their heads. Um, their heads. Okay, right? So, that's where this is Enoch, Noah. Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. All right, so those are the five. Um, and there's the 12 tribes, which aren't mentioned by name. So, but, so that's who we have. So according to them, so, 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 so actually we have five of them, not, not four. So, because apparently Khanov is also elevated. Whether or not you'd say, so just an interesting note in terms of uh, second temple literature. So there's a lot of things called Enochic literature, basically, because all we know about Noah is that so we know the Noah walked with God and then disappeared. So in Baichena, there's a whole bunch of works um, written and attributed to Chano, um, basically where people, they're called pseudepigrapha because they're most, everyone's really not worried about Chano. Um, people want to claim that it was. And they would basically put whatever words within they want to say, they would say Chano said it. So um, that was a, a big thing in the, by Cheney, we have whole, there's a whole bunch of books about that. If you were curious about reading about that, search, you know, Nakic literature. So, yeah, you can Google it if you want more stories on that again, another time. Right? So, so that, so in addition, we also have Noah is also included. So that would imply that they're, that's that pretty good then. You know, so at least according to Tobit and Ben Sira. Ben Sira is actually the closest one to being of, of that weren't part of Tanakh that almost made it. There was actually a couple of times in Gemara where it says Shana Mar and then it quotes Ben Sira. So it was really close, uh, but it didn't make it in the end. So, okay, so that's so, so that that's what we what the Pakrava say. So now let's now we're gonna move forward a little bit in, in years again. So Tobit was some point potentially between the first by Rishon and by Shani. Zero is written most definitely in the uh, it was written sometime after the start of, of the Maccabees, so again, probably about like 150, 100 BCE. So now we're going to that of Philo of Alexandria, who was um, at the turn of the millennia. 
Um, he lives, he is called Father of Alexandria because, well, he lived in Alexandria, um, in Egypt. Um, so interesting note about, about, about him is that he was a leader of many, of, 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 he was a leader amongst Jews in, in Alexandria, Egypt. Um, he was a Hellenistic Jewish philosopher who, at, who, 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 in order, in an attempt to get people to, to be, to be more observant of, of, of the Torah, he gave Ta'amehem its vote. Unfortunately, the result was that people instead took his tom of his mitzvah and then decided to throw away the mitzvah. And the people who really liked what what Philo had to say were the Christians who used the, his writings as a basis for why they could avoid doing almost all of the um, mitzvah and just follow the spirit of the law instead and not follow any of the laws. In fact, Philo actually at some point um, in his writings, he, he laments wrote this so that you guys would follow the follow would, should, would follow Torah mitzvot. I don't know what you're doing. Like I told you I'm doing this. Why are you ignoring me? I don't get it. So. Okay, so how about file? So how does he relate to um uh how does he relate to Niloth? So to that effect, so we have again this is in this is this is on on, on Abraham again this was, this was definitely written in Greek because he didn't he he couldn't really read Hebrew very well. He he says I apologize for my inaccuracies in my, in my uh, commentary, but I had I mostly learned off of the Greek translation because I did not I do not speak Hebrew very well. Now, when, he, when he's talking about Noah and saying how uh, and ranking him and how good he is, so he mentions that. Right, that he is praised as being possessed of such great virtues through his generation. So, what is it saying that he's what it says? You should think to me, my right, perfect his generation. So, what does this do? This is showing that he was not perfect, absolutely, that he was in good in comparison with the others who lived at that time. Right, so this may sound familiar from Rashi and about the debate is he good only in generation? If you know, they have of, of, of the time of Avram, and here it seems like. And Philo of Alexandria is just saying a similar thing that he's comparatively good, but that doesn't mean that. But then again, he's not the absolute best, but he's still really he's good, definitely very good compared to the people he was with who were wicked. So still not too, not so bad. So, right. So then, so and as far as the story about his his drunkenness later on, so I'm just good. Just so just so isn't I, I didn't bring it here because it was very long, a little rambly. Um, so basically, but he, he comments on the fact that when he was drinking, that Noah drank in the way that a wise man drinks. So, which would imply that he didn't necessarily get drunk. He, I mean, he may have gotten drunk, but he didn't, you know, like he wasn't, you know, like uh, pass out drunk and like it was all his fault. Rather, whatever, anything that happened afterwards, it was Tom's fault for peeking at his dad. He went to sleep back in his bed. And, you know, you shouldn't have done that. So. So, so, so then we have Korofilo, so that, that ranks, so we have Noah being ranked pretty high, but not quite of a level, but ranked pretty, pretty good. And then we have, um, oh, did somebody just drop out? Did that happened. Um, okay. So, and then we had, uh, then we have pseudo, then we have pseudo Philo, which is an anonymous work. Um, people thought it was Philo until they realized that it wasn't Philo. Um, so, yeah, so that's pseudo Philo. Um, so, and so, you know, we don't have a full, um, we don't have a, a full copy of everything that he wrote, but what we have, so, um, what's relevant, so it says, the, he adds the word of, of Matzachim, he also adds the word Rachamim, right, the word mercy. Noah found grace and mercy before the Lord, and these are generations, Noah was a righteous man under the thought of generation, please the Lord. So the question of the adding of the word, you know, it puts it just finding Matzachim, it also says, Rachamim, right? So, Rachamim. so that could also imply that maybe Noah wasn't quite so worthy of being in merit, on his own merits, but maybe that because of his, he needed God to be merciful in order to save. Okay, right. so now, it's, now when we're looking at, you know, how would you try and fix up the story to make it look like Noah is, you know, is a saint? For that, we have Jubilees. Jubilees was written um, during Bayat Shani. Um, it was a um, it was it was a really calendaric work meant to similar to um, if, if anybody here has read through Seder Olam, notice that it looks that it's that the structure is similar because probably the Seder Olam is 
literally trying to show that this is wrong. Um, but again, yeah, that's a separate story. So, uh, so what did so in so in Jubilees again? This was written by people, but it was not written by by, by by Chazal. It was written by the Stukim or by I'm people sorry. who had similar views to the Stukim. Uh, so. So the question, so we'll, we'll see what they said. So they, they fixed a lot of things in order to fit with their halacha, which we may not agree with. But they they a lot of interesting things that we'll see. We'll read through it. Um, I'll show read the highlights because I see we only have 12 minutes left. And I want to show we have, we still haven't even gotten to Chazal yet, which is, which is so we're going to try, hopefully we'll get to everything. Uh, I apologize. The sources will be there for you to look them more in depth than the summary that I will give you outside. Okay, right, so we see. Um, that you'll notice there's a lot of the word jubilees um, to, um, uh, to, um, um, scattered all over the place because that's how they used to. That's how they used to. Uh, um, that's how that's how because that's how they used to keep track of time. That's why it's called jubilees because jubilees are 50 years. So 50 and 50 is 200, which you get to the normal way we count, but they count it in terms of 50. So jubilees. So now. So this is so now we're picking up at the end of the of the flood. So God says there'll be no more flood. So and so and so let's so I'll, I'll I'll read. So for this reason it is ordained and written on the heavenly tablets they should celebrate the feast of the weeks in this month once a year to renew the covenant every year. And this whole festival is celebrated in heaven from the day of creation to the day of Noah, twenty six jubilees, five weeks of years. So, which means that so what so what is it, what is the feast of weeks? Oh, that's Shavuot. So this means that apparently the um, Noah's offering of the korban took place on Shavuot, which means that there's some direct connection between what Noah did with the fact that Matan Torah is when it was when it is, and that it was celebrated. By not only it was not normally says the avot observed the mitzvot, the the the, mitzvot, the um the mitzvot. So apparently the avot also includes Noah and his sons, right? Because Noah and his sons observed it for seven jubilees and one and one week of years until Noah passed away, and then his sons did away with it. So maybe we don't really like Noah's sons, so they didn't really follow the mitzvot. They wanted to out of respect for their father, so we can throw away Noah's sons. But at least Noah seemingly is one of the avot. Um. Then we see that, and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and his children observed it um, until the, the, they forgot it um, in, when they were in Egypt, and then they did it again. So it should be noted that there's a lot of things that, that note that, they, that there is a tradition, even even in so Jubilees as well, of the fact that it was a mitzvah, but the difference is that it's supposed to being based on an event that's going to happen in the future, it's based on an event in the past, that of the first time when, of, of God's covenant with Noah. So, this is a very big change. Also, in the book of chapter 7, so the Noah is planting the vines, so he waits a couple of years, right? So he's practicing the, the, the laws of, Kila, of, 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 of Orla. He's waiting three years before he can eat the fruits in the fourth year. Not only that, when, he, when he's when he's drinking his wine, he's not drinking like it looks like in the Sukkim where he, where he drank himself into oblivion and disappeared. Rather, he made a fat, he, he celebrated with a feast and he invited everybody and he made a korban to go with it too. And then, you know, he went this, and then he, and he even, and he, and he even, uh, and he did, and he did all the things properly, like taught, as taught in by Yikra about how to offer the korban out where you would do the fats and, all, all, and the blood and everything. He just does everything correctly. Then he goes to sleep. And then after this whole feast is when he goes to sleep in his bed. So his drink and drunkenness is a very positive thing, right? It's because he had a feast and you go to sleep after, after a feast and that's fine. So, and then we see at the end, when we, when we go to the, the, the case of, you know, even, of, even though his son had uncovered him, but we, so we, we don't have, um, we don't have the case of him. We, he's uncovered in his tent. We don't have to like have Tom walking in on him and that whole weird story. That's not there. He slept without a blanket that night. Not a big deal. And then also we see that that, that as opposed to the last thing he says is to cursing his sons. 
chapter 10, we see in Jubilees, we see that there are there were demons starting to cause them to stray. And then said, Noah intervenes and puts them back on the right path, gets them to do tshuva, and gives them, and also gives them a book of remedies. And then he passed, and, then, and, and gives them a, and gives them words of advice. And so to not, not fall prey again. And then he, and then we, then he moves on. So this is a very big change in terms of what's going on. Noah went from being a uh, simple uh, from, from you know possibly ending his life as a drunkard to ending his life being or being, being making his sons return and uh, return and do tshuva. Very big difference in terms of how you end the story. So similar to the Jubilees, we have the Dead Sea Scrolls, right? The Dead Sea Scrolls are um, again were um, were written over the course of uh, around two centuries, from 100 and uh, 30 BCE until around the time of the, of the destruction of the of the temple. Um, so as far as when these when these these particular ones are written, um, it's based on carbon dating. So certain ones are older than others. Um, but as far as how old you them are, I'll leave that aside for now. So let's. But I'll again. I'll, I'll summarize. So I'll point out here that at one uh, that there is one place where and um, when they have the, they have prayers for um, Yom Tovim, and it, there it seems to have. Um, like you know, for Rosh Hashanah, it looks like Kirshanu, right? Like from the, which kind of sounds a lot like the you know uh, Vidu, part of Vidui. And it says Vatakim Lenoach Breed Litzak Liakov Amunatacha, which seems to be that in the prayers they invoked Noach Avram Yisrael and Yaakov. And this is the Dead Sea Scrolls done by either the which is not not Chazal. They're either either either, either, either the Ketuvim, the Tzdukim, or the Esdim. Um, who exactly they are? Again, long debate. Um, not not enough time for that for now. If you want, I can bring it up another time. So again, and then there's another fabric we find here where it says "Takem le Noach et Habrit" over here, right? So again, it's, the text is fragmentary. But if you think the, that about before it says "Takem Noach Brit," then that would mean that here too is "Takem Noach Brit." That means that they're invoking in the course of their prayers. Um, they're invoking the covenant that that Hashem had with Noah, which we do as well on um, on, on Rosh Hashanah. And Zichrono, the Pesukim that we read are actually from the, from, from Noah, from Gavri Noah. And also as far as the question of how do you deal with the, um, you know, we have the Dolphin Dance of the Pachafon, which is a running commentary on pseudo, a pseudo Midrash. Um, it looks similar to Blues in many ways. More on that again, separate year. I'm time to apologize. Um, again, if you want to look more, Google does a blog on it's fascinating. Um, I gave a link, to, I think I gave a link to it um, here as well. So if you so there it so we change around some of the some of the things. We don't so instead of Vayit Gal Olo, we instead it's changed to uh, they've changed it to being it gal, meaning that God had it said he that Noah has a vision. Um, so, and instead, the, instead of the instead of the drinking incident, they replace that entirely and simply have the, the whole thing being um, there's no mention of being drunk, just he has a nevoa, and that's it. And so he never curses his son, nothing. So Noah ends off ends off on a on a clean slate. He's perfect, perfectly invoke him. He does nothing wrong. First God to do pro bono. First on the covenant with God. Noah's the man. Well, that's the Jesse Pachafon. We're not Chazal. So. As we start getting a little closer to Chazal, we see it, so um, it was a time frame. So there's Josephus who thinks that he was uh, uh, who, who claims to be claims to be a Prushi. Um, so, uh, so we're talking about when. Um, so he tends to so he tends to view Noah a little more moderately, um, and so he says that. Okay, so he ha- so he doesn't have the he doesn't have the drinking into oblivion, but he still but he has the he, he has the added part of the drinking with the korban, which is still a little bit better. Now let's get to um, like get, yeah. So again, he has he still some of the tribulations of the stukim in there, but so where is he? Where does he fall? We'll leave that again for, for another time. So. So now we're gonna now, now let's get to Chazal. So the famous Rashi is saying we say Bidorotav. So is that good or terrible? So is is he would he been great to Avram or not? 
So that comes down to what we said before, to, to how do you view all of all things? Should he have protested like Avram did and he failed and therefore he's a failure? Or would, that's an unreasonable to expect out of Noah, and therefore Noah did a great job. Or, and also the question of Noah being drunk at the end, is that his fault to get in off or not? And also a very important question is after Noah got drunk, what did he do? Noah, you know, got drunk, cursed his son, and then he ended his life. And then, and then like he lived his life, you know, like wallowing in, in a drunken stupor for the next 300 years. Or did he, um, you know, pick himself back up and just like he had fallen along before, and now he's back up on his feet again? So that's a good question, of which I don't have, the, uh, which, uh, of which I can't answer because that part is actually not, there's no mention of that in the text. I will point out um, that there are many Midrashim that point each way. If you want to read more again, that's, I left the whole page from the Midrashim of everybody. So I just want to point out in terms of the fact that um, if Noah was a time, an opening time of Avram or not. So if you'll notice here in terms of the years, Noah died in 2006. Avram died, was born in 1948, so they overlapped for 58 years. So was Noah alive and a nobody in the time of Avram? Quite possibly. That's when you think when you think Avram noticed, discovered God, and was chosen. And lastly, um, a question of um, of you'll, you'll note that Noah is both comes from the it's, he happens to come from the line of Sheik, who are uh, noted to be um, Isha Lokim. And Noah was also at the Lokim, yet he's also commanded to um, do construction, which is the trait of Cain, right? working the land. Cain will work the land, he built cities, and his, and his great great grandkids built the tide of civilization, metallurgy, husbandry, farming, um, and music. Um, so, that, so, yet, no, and Noah's task is to do both. So, so I'd like to suggest that, as a, you know, this is a sort of a combination of a lot of the theories you mentioned until now, that Noah was trying to do two, two jobs. Right? He was trying to be the man of to be the man of God as well as being a man of the land. But the problem is, is that the question is, did he succeed or not succeed? And, and that the way and the way you read that is based on how you read the end of Noah's life. If Noah succeeded in incorporating him being godly as well as as well as him being a man of the earth. And you'd say that Noah planted the vineyard as a way of trying to save, save the land and save mankind. And you know he made a mistake and got drunk in the middle, but you know that's okay. Or you could even wipe out the drunken part of the story. Just say he just drank like a wise man did and goes in the tent and you know didn't put on his blanket at night. Not his fault. But on the other hand, you could say no. Noah had been a man of God. He had taken it and he had dedicated his working of the land. His construction towards God, but after the flood, it, he was a broken man. He couldn't do it anymore. That's why he planted his vineyard to drink himself into oblivion to give up on life. So, which one was Noah? I, I I don't know, but everybody should hopefully keep that in mind. You know, while going through this week's parsha, to see do you think that Noah was a uh, he picked himself back up and became the upstanding individual he was before? Did he continue to improve, or did he? To come to the to, to the temptations of wine and descend into drunken madness. Okay. So, if anybody has any questions or comments? Please feel free to ask them now. I will unmute everybody who I previously muted. Um, so you're welcome. To, everybody's welcome to comment. Um, sure. Sure. Thank you. My pleasure. So does, has anybody changed their minds on Noah since this year? Anybody view important? Thank you so much. My pleasure. Aaron, so if anybody has any other thoughts. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you everybody for listening in. Thank you so much. I mean, it's just a quick thought. In my opinion, he just kind of follows suit of all, like a lot of the like Abbot in Parashi, just like it's not a perfect story. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. But the question is, is how would you read it? You can read it, you can read it as being better or worse. The question is, how do you want like in comparison to the Avot? For Noah, to live Avot. Then when there, there are places where we don't explicitly aren't explicitly did the right thing or the wrong thing, or there's just like empty like empty years. The question is how do you want to view those years in between? Do you want to view it as they've been they keep building words as they have it until now, which would then rise into higher heights? 
Or will you view it as, well, this being an empty time I mean, it means that something went wrong? I also think, I don't know if, like, if this is the right sort of point, but um, there's also deciding on judgments of the Avot who are, yes, supposed to be, I guess, perfect or whatever they're considered in this way, but seeing them as flawed as well and having, if you say that, like, yes, they were holier and um, I guess closer to perfect, but also could have made mistakes, then is Noah really any worse than that? Well, we, we have one ex clear example where he is worse, at least compared to Avraham, in terms of the, he does not even attempt to save anybody else according to the Jogim. I'm, I mean, that, is one, that is one thing we, we can have against why Noah would not make the cut. Right. Would be that it would be his, like, that, again, that, he could still be a great guy, but Avraham might need to try and save the world as opposed to simply saving their family. Oh, and yes, and um, I believe that she, uh, she, uh, Shira wrote, and in our tradition, he's not one of the Avot, correct? We do not, we have three Avot, not four. Yes, um, oh, I know. So. Well, I mean, don't the Avot serve a different purpose? Wasn't it more like, I think Noah was just more, like it was more just about not having like a human race that was like greedy versus like, you know, religion necessarily. You know, like the whole, I think the whole idea of the Avot was like them kind of starting off like this like foundational part of like Judaism, like, like, you know, like kind of um, this monotheism that eventually transitions into creating like this entire different like chosen nation. Whereas like Noah was about creating an entire world that like, you know, God felt like wasn't bad at least, which is like, you know, having a chosen nation. Mm -hmm. Right. So part of the so the, if you're interested in the in the in the have been developed in, in the chosen theory. So uh, Rabbi Nachman Lipdag has an excellent um, uh, thesis on this, where he goes through the um, how God's interaction went from being on a on humanity as a whole and slowly yeah I like slowly narrowed. Um, which again, I I point you towards. So then, like, so he's very much a fan of saying that. After the failure of with Adam and Chava, followed by the failure of Noah, so the, and then that's when God decided that that relating to, that relating to all of people, all of the mankind at once is an exercise of utility. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, it went to being the family-based, much smaller mo model. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, yeah, I think like also Noah had like more trauma to deal with. Right, so it's also the whole world dying on you is a hard thing to live through. So you've got to give them some points for you know not collapsing. Yeah. Or at least hold stuff, um, sticking it out at least until you know you got a, a guarantee from God the world wouldn't wouldn't collapse before giving up. Either way, very impressive. Yeah. Just, yeah. Well, I just feel like the like the entire expectation like of what Noah is supposed to do, was supposed to do, what he witnessed is just very different than the Yavot. It isn't necessarily worse or better, just like functionally different. Correct. Right. Just, just interesting to note that there are some, there are, as we, as we saw from Jubilees and many of the other um, people from the second, from the IHA, that they tried to bring, to, to amend the story, make it look a lot more like the story of Avram Isaac and Yaakov. Meaning to, as in they, as in they I mean, you know, all the things that we were being problematic and showing, you know, his struggles, they whitewashed. Or they edited in a more positive light, or they added a story to fix it afterwards, just so you just remove ambiguity. Well, I mean, that might be part of, like, I mean, not to, like, dive into this too much, but that might be part of why that was not so much included in the narrative, is that, like, that wasn't the point, you know? It's a very, like, different approach. Like, a lot of people view that, like, whatever you read in Tanakh, like, Whatever, whatever historical figures are viewed in Tanakh as like being favored by God, you have to have this kind of like perfect image of them for the most part. But like, I feel like that's very much like a um, part of the rabbis to some extent to like, and if it's like when you when you make something canon and not canon, like like trying to kind of have a narrative that you're trying to like put across. And like, that's the point is that like, like it wasn't the same. Right. You know, the question is, which is how is it not the same, and where and how are you gonna? And we had a, we had a wide range. The question is, where you so where do you want to plot Noah? So again, 
because yeah. just, just for your own knowledge, like where do you, how do you want to view him at the end of the day? And then where is he? Where is he? Where is he? And then like, what did he succeed in? Where did he fail in? Again, and how do you view him overall? Then I don't, again, there's no, there's no right or wrong answer. Just the question is, which one do you feel is the most true? Uh, uh, okay. like, I, don't know. I, don't, I don't know if I like put him in con like the same even like context. So that's fine. So th th again, so then he, he can still be a righteous man. He can still be a very righteous man and just not be one of the other, which is perfectly fine. Just hope it and uh, do believe strongly disagree with you. You know, from that point of view, the office is a success story. Wait, what was that? What was that, Ma? Oh, sorry. I said, um, sorry, I didn't realize I was unmuted. I said that. Um, the first person we meet and the first person that we meet in Brajit is Adam Harishon. And he didn't have so many things that he had to follow. He really had very few things that he had to follow. And he clearly was not a success story. And the next person we're introduced to really is Noah. So Noah um, has more things because he's in a, you know, there are more people around, there's a totally different climate. And he's very successful at the beginning. I know it says Bedor Tav, but he's very successful at the beginning. So when we come to the end of the story, and he is, and he fails, and he doesn't fail, he, he errs, let's say, at the end of the story. He didn't air this, this as extremely as Adam Harishon aired, or as, you know, Kayan aired. Um, and it was a different kind, it was a different kind of problem than the Avot had, but they all had their own problems. None of them were perfect. They all were all looking, you know, so that we don't think about him because he doesn't, you know, have that whole declaration for God, from God, you know, to God, like like Abraham does. So he's a different kind of person. But I, I do see him not maybe not as a tzaddik, but I do see him I mean, as somebody. Uh, tzaddik just means he did fifty point zero zero one percent good, which I think we could probably say no off there. Yeah, but even more than that, compare, obviously compare, and first of all, it's, it's a little bit like the tzaddikim are a little bit like, um, as at least as it's presented, it's a little bit like color. Color is only relative to other colors. So he's a tzaddik relative to his, his generation, right? And we don't hear about, about when Avraham starts out, we don't hear about the other people that he's, you know, relative to that gener generation. We don't know what was really going on over there. You know, they don't live at the same time. So you can't, you know, you can't compare people. So my question. I understand that's what it says. Right. So my question then is, what about the first fifty-eight years? So well, that's one sort of the fifty-eight years question could be fifty-eight years they they were alive at the same time. Is that those fifty-eight years? Um, well, who's to say that Avram had even discovered God yet, right? Because no, because first command to Avram is given when he's seventy-five. Mm -hmm. So he could have only found out about God, and he had, you know. There's still a 17 year gap there, so he could have discovered God at age 60, and then that'll solve the issue. Right. But also, it might not have been in the same region. It could have been what? It could have been in different parts of the world, for all we know. We just don't know. No, there, we don't have any major. There's no major, as far as I know, um, saying that Noah met Abraham and the stories they had together. Right. Like, oh, if someone wants to write one, just let me know if you've heard somebody write that midrash, or you know of it because I'd be interested to hear it but yeah <laughs> uh, she was at North NC Abra's Facebook post about, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shira Shira Abra right okay so. right he's yeah. not right he's not one of the um the uh, the other uh, no. okay Okay, so thank you, Chaim. Thank you, Shkach. Okay, my pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Be fair mind. Thank you. Rabbi Chaim. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you.